I'm Andrew Solomon. I'm the author of The Noonday Demon, An Atlas of Depression, and most recently of Far From the Tree, Parents, Children, and the Search for Identity. In Far From the Tree, I set out to look at how families respond to various kinds of challenging and unusual offspring. Families of deaf people, families of autistic people, families of people who commit crimes, families of prodigies who are also quite overwhelmed, families who are transgender, families of people who are transgender. Uh, I looked at many different kinds of families uh, and really tried to look at uh, how they managed to process having children who were different in these ways. The investigation was shaped by my own experience as the gay child of straight parents and was in part an investigation of an attempt to understand what other families went through processes like the one that my own family went through. I hatched the idea that there are really two kinds of identity. There are vertical identities that get passed down generationally from parent to child. So one's ethnicity, one's nationality, um, often one's uh, language, um, frequently one's religion. These are things parents are likely to have in common with their children. And even though some of those identities can be difficult, there is no attempt to cure ethnicity or to cure minority religious interests. They're things that are reinforced from early on. But there are also these other categories, the ones that I looked at, which I've called horizontal identities. Horizontal because they're learned not from uh, one's parents, with whom one does not have this thing in common, but from a peer group. And those horizontal identities have time out of mind been addressed as possible uh, things to cure. So I was very interested in the ways in which these things are defined and in the ways in which families really do rise to the occasion of having these extraordinary children. I found that most of the families I talked to had gone through phases. They were outraged at the time of diagnosis or of recognition of their child's difference. They were uh, then bewildered while they tried to figure out what to do and what their child would be able to do. They were then in many instances accepting and they were finally in many instances celebratory but there isn't a simple linear progression. Sometimes people are warmly enthusiastic and celebratory about their children, and then they experience a medical or a social setback, and their whole point of view shifts. Identity formation is at the center of this. How, if you have a child with a stigmatized difference, can you help that child to form a reasonable identity? And in effect, parents have to decide what aspects of their child's condition they're going to cure and what aspects of their child's condition they're going to accept and celebrate. It seems to me that all parenting involves changing your children in some ways and celebrating your children in other ways. You change your child by educating your child, by giving them a sense of moral values, by teaching them manners, by doing all of these other positive and productive things. And you accept your child for who he is or she is and help your child to feel as good as possible about himself or herself. There's a lot that needs to be changed. There's a lot that needs to be accepted and celebrated. And then there's a foggy middle, and people struggle in that foggy middle to figure out what it is they need to do and are doing. The interviews with the families I had were extraordinary, in part because so many of them had constructed meaning out of their experiences. One mother I talked to said, people always give us these little sayings, like God doesn't give you any more than you can handle. But children like ours are not preordained as a gift. They're a gift because that's what we have chosen. And I was interested in that process of choice and interested in the processes through which people construct meanings and end up grateful for lives they would have done anything to avoid. It's an area which I think is of enormous relevance to the field of psychiatry because identity formation is a process in which people often need enormous support. There's a reframing that has to go on from what a tragedy, I have a child like this, to this is my child whom I love and wish to support. People need a lot of help in figuring out how to do that. Some of the issues I looked at are mental illness issues. Obviously, people with schizophrenia need the direct care of psychiatrists, but many of them have to do with understanding family systems and understanding how family systems can strengthen or compromise the experience of people directly affected with a variety of conditions. And that's a process in which the advances in um, psychiatry and the advances in the philosophical aspects of mental health care make an enormous, tremendous, crucial difference.